There are so many different videos out there all about growing tomatoes successfully, but in today's video, I really want to hone in on the fact of growing more tomatoes because in the end, that's our goal, right? Growing as many tomatoes as we possibly can per plant. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process and all of the steps that I take to doing just that. Let's get into it. All right, the first step that we're all going to have to take if you're growing tomatoes is setting out transplants. And this is possibly one of the most important steps in the process because if you get this step down, your plants are going to be better set for success, meaning that they should reward you with more tomatoes later on in the season. Now, all along a tomato plant stem are little tiny nodules that when exposed to moisture and soil, will actually start to grow roots out of them. Meaning that as deep as you plant this tomato plant, new roots are going to grow. So if you plant this stem deeper in the soil, you're going to get a much more established plant earlier on in the season, and you're going to get a deeper root system, meaning you won't need to water as much, you won't need to fertilize as much, because those things are going to be much more available to the plant the deeper it gets in the soil. So what I like to do is just remove any suckers, which we'll talk about later on in this video, um, any leaves or any type of plant material up to about three to four sets of true leaves or roughly four to six leaves um, left on the plant. So you can see here, we just have the stem now and the top of the plant available. That way the plant can still photosynthesize. It can still draw energy from the sun and continue growing while the stem underneath the ground is growing new roots and getting more established for growth. After that, we just pop the tomato plant out of its container and we plant it up to that first set of true leaves and then the first step in this tomato plant's life is complete. The next step that you wanna get done almost as soon as you plant the tomato plants in your garden is staking. Staking your tomato plants is super important, especially for your larger varieties, because they're going to set very heavy fruit that, if not staked properly, will snap that plant right in half. You can really use anything that's sturdy to keep the plant from falling over. Um, one thing that I really enjoy using for my tomato plants are T-posts, um, but you can use cattle panel, um, you can use refurbished wood, uh, anything that's going to keep that plant from snapping in half. And then what I like to do is just take a string or some type of heavy duty wire and then just make sure I'm wrapping that tomato plant loosely around that stake. The next step that you're going to need to do as the plant grows is pruning. And pruning your tomato plants really depends on what type of plants you're growing, which leads me into the categories of indeterminate and determinate varieties. Determinate varieties are varieties that usually don't exceed five feet in height, and once they get to that certain height, they stop plant growth, and then they start putting all of their energy into setting fruit, meaning that they're going to set all of their fruit in a relatively short amount of time, uh, usually no more than two to three weeks, uh, which means that these varieties are usually better for things like canning and cooking because you're going to be able to harvest all of them at one time instead of throughout the season. These varieties are usually earlier maturing and they're much better if you don't want a super large plant that's going to get out of control on you. Um, they're a lot easier to maintain than indeterminates. And the thing with these is that you actually don't need to prune determinates. As a determinate tomato grows, it will set out its suckers or its branching vines, but those are only going to get to a certain size and then they're going to start setting fruit. So you can think of these more as vining branches that are solely for the purpose of producing tomatoes, which means you don't want to prune these. These are going to set fruit for you, and the more suckers you have, the more fruit you're going to get. Indeterminates, on the other hand, are tomato plants that do not stop growing. They can get seven, eight, nine, ten feet if you let them and if you have a long enough growing season. But the problem with these is that they're going to get super tall and super out of control if you don't maintain the plants. Now the suckers on these, uh, these 
are not like determinants. These will continue to grow out. You can think of this plant more as a vining type, like your pumpkins or like your watermelon, um, where they, in the wild, would just spread all along the ground or the surface of the soil, and they will set their roots out, and then they will continue growing. And although these branching stems will produce fruit, it's not going to be like your determinant varieties. These are more solely for the purpose of spreading and covering as much of an area as possible and setting its roots down, keeping the plant alive. So in my experience, I like to prune the suckers on my indeterminate varieties. Here you can see in between each leaf and the main stem, a new stem is going to grow out of it. So what I like to do is just prune in between each one, removing those small suckers as the plant grows. Because if you let those keep growing, the plant's going to get out of control. And yes, you can still get a lot of tomatoes this way, but letting a plant get out of control and of that size and letting those suckers grow out as wide as it is tall, that's just a welcome sign for your pests and diseases that are going to live among that giant jungle of a plant. And a lot of times, it's not gonna be easy to identify them until it's too late. As your indeterminate variety grows, I do like to let another sucker grow and creating almost like a V shape um, up the plant so that it has two main stems growing instead of just one. This is going to double your fruit production and it's not going to make your plant get too out of control as long as you maintain the future suckers that grow. But this just allows the plant more opportunities for flower and fruit development without putting all of the plant's energy into the leaves and all of those suckers that otherwise would be there. The next step that's going to be a huge deciding factor on the amount of tomatoes you get is watering because without water, your tomato plant cannot live to an extent. Tomato plants are actually very drought resistant and they don't like a lot of water once they get to a certain size. When the plants are younger, you can give them a lot more water, um, but you do want to be careful that the soil doesn't get soggy because at this stage, diseases and things can set in and kill the plants a lot easier at that size. Um, but once the plants get bigger, they don't need as much water. They set their roots very deeply and they're going to have most of the water that they need deeper in the soil. In the greenhouse behind me, last year it was completely full of tomato plants and a lot of them got seven plus feet tall and we probably watered once to twice a week. One thing that happens to a ton of people that overwater their tomato plants is cracking, which once the plants start to produce fruit, if you give those plants too much water, again, it's all gonna be going to those developing fruits, meaning that they're going to crack a lot easier because they're just being infused with a ton of water that they don't need. In the summer, when it's super hot and when the sun's intensity is at its peak, a tomato plant's natural response is to curl its leaves um, it's going to droop a bit, and that's just to conserve the water in the plant. And a lot of gardeners, especially new, are going to think that this is a problem, that the plants are dehydrated and that they need more water, when in reality, it's just the plant's natural response. So if you give the plants too much water, especially at this stage, you're going to run into problems like cracking, diseases, and some of the other things that we talked about earlier in this video. Tomato plants can thrive on a bit of neglect, so if you allow the plants to be able to continue growing, even when you are not right there babying them and giving them all of the water and nutrients that they need, they're going to be better set for success, especially when you're not able to water them over a weekend or if you go on vacation or something of that sort. Because I'm telling you, if you baby your plants and you continue to give them water two, three times a day, that day that you miss watering your tomato plants, they could die the second that soil dries out. The next thing to talk about is fertilizing. Tomato plants are heavy feeders. They enjoy a quick boost of nutrients. And what I like to do at the start of the tomato plant's life or when you go to put them into the garden is either add a two to three inch layer of compost and then mix it into the top two to three inches of the soil or get a handful of granular fertilizer and put it into each planting hole and then mix that into the top two to three inches of the soil. And either way you go, both are going to get that plant established. They're going to get it off on the right start. And it should be all that tomato plant needs 
for a good while into its growth. One thing you want to be careful on is nitrogen. Uh, tomato plants are going to get most of the nitrogen that they need directly in the soil and every time it rains, available nitrogen is being given directly to that plant right away. And the thing with nitrogen is that it's used for plant or leaf development, plant growth development, and not necessarily for fruit development. So if you're giving your plants too much nitrogen, you're going to have huge lush green plants, but no fruit. So if you're getting a big green plant that's looking absolutely amazing, uh, but you have no flowers or no fruit on that plant, you may want to cut back on the available nitrogen that you're giving to your plant. As your plants grow and you start seeing flowers and fruit, it may be good to start giving them a small dose of phosphorus. Phosphorus is the second number in the MPK ratio, which is on all fertilizing bags. So as your plants grow and you start seeing signs of fruit and flower development, it may be good to give your plants a dose of something that is high in phosphorus and low in nitrogen. The best way to tell if your plants need fertilizer is to just look at them. If you put your plants in the ground, they're growing at a... What in the world? If your plants seem to be growing at a good rate, they are green and vibrant, um, and they're starting to produce flowers a few weeks after you put them into the ground, that should be all of the signs you need to tell you that you're on the right track, that the plants do not need fertilizer, um, and that they have all of the available nutrients they need in the soil at that time. The other thing that's super important to keep in mind is plant spacing. You don't want your plants too crowded, planted too close together. Otherwise, as the plants grow, they're going to entangle in each other. Um, it's going to create a mass jungle of plant growth and it's going to just invite a bunch of diseases and pests that you don't want. You also want to give your plants enough of a growing area so that they have all of the nutrients they need and that they're not growing into your other plants area and taking nutrients from them. I found that spacing my tomato plants three to four feet apart is all of the space they need to grow and thrive. The final thing I'm going to cover in today's video is pests and diseases. We all have them. They can be a real problem. They can get very out of hand quickly, and they're just something that is so annoying. And they're just something that if you take care of right at the start, you're going to have a better chance of survival for that plant. The first disease that you're probably going to find set in is early blight. Now, early blight is just circular rings that start to develop on your tomato plant's leaves that are just little spores that, if in contact with other leaves, will continue to spread. And tomato leaves are early blight's favorite meal. Early blight usually happens when there is a lot of moisture present in the tomato plant. So like we talked about, if you allow your tomato plants to just get out of control, there's going to be a lot of cooler, darker areas that are moist and they're going to be present of early blight. But if you continue to keep your plants pruned um, and allow proper airflow to pass through the plant's leaves, you should be able to keep the early blight at bay. Throughout the season, you'll probably see different degrees of blight um, especially late blight, which happens later on in the season when the temperatures start to drop, but it's still wet outside. Um, and this usually is when the plants start to take a toll. But again, if you do these simple steps like we talked about, pruning, proper airflow, those type of things, you should be able to keep your plant prolonged later on in the season, meaning that you're going to get much more fruit production. Pests are another big thing, but if you take care of them early on in the season, you shouldn't have to worry too much about them later on. As you grow your garden, every year you're going to learn more and more about your pest life cycle. So when they lay their eggs, when they hatch, uh, what time they like to come out and feed on your plants. And as you grow, you're going to learn this life cycle and you're going to be able to better manage them throughout the years. I think the most common pests that most people experience in their gardens are aphids and white flies. But the good thing about these is that they're super easy to manage if you kill them at the start of when you start seeing them. So just going out every morning, looking underneath the leaves, looking on the plant stem, and if you see them, just squishing them right there, or just doing something that's going to eradicate them as soon as you start seeing them, that way their populations don't get out of control and you're able to manage them a lot easier. If you can, put in the comment section below what your favorite way to grow tomatoes is, 
Again, a lot of these are just experiences of mine, but everybody has their own experiences. Everybody grows tomato plants differently, and my opinion is by no way the best. So I'm curious to see how you guys grow your tomato plants, what your ways of success are, so that other people watching this video can not only learn from me, but learn from you guys as well. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you learned something new, please make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content coming soon. And check out our seed shop as well. We've got tons of awesome varieties in there, um, a lot more coming soon for 2025, and so much more. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.